Index fund investing or ETF investing remains one of the safest forms of investing regardless of how the market performs. I'm Nick and on this channel, Nick Finance Clips, I basically talk about risk-free or safe investments relative to other riskier asset classes. If that sounds like something that interests you, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and join us on this journey. Okay. Now before we jump into the two best ETFs for 2022, check out this clip. Warren, a moment ago, you mentioned that you still are recommending that people invest in an S&P 500 index fund. Uh, let me ask this question that came in from Kevin. He says, the last few weeks we've been hearing from active money managers that the day of passing in passive investing is over. The historical safety of investing in an index fund long term is gone. Would you please provide your thoughts on this topic, particularly in regards to an investment time span of 10 years? Well, I can tell you, I haven't changed my will, and, and it, it, it directs that my my widow would uh, have 90% of the funds in index funds, and it's it's I think it's better advice than people are generally getting from people that are getting paid a lot to give other advice. You don't make a lot of money advising an S and P 500 index fund. I mean that, and and. Uh, how you can say the day, day of index funds is over? I mean, you're, if, you're, if you say the the day of investing in America is over, I would disagree quite violently. And then, is there something special about index funds being a terrible way to invest? Uh, I just don't think they're, they're really it's very hard to have evidence of that. I mean, it's, if, if the index funds reflect the market, uh, uh, and one side has high fees that. Uh, to think they can pick out stocks uh, and the other side has low fees, I know which side's going to win over time. And it's you have to recognize that it's in in a great many people's interest to convince you that they can do something that they may well even believe they can. And a certain percentage of them will do it from luck and a few people will do it from skill. And that's what makes it so enticing that you can find the Jim Simons or somebody that is going to produce extraordinary return. Uh, and uh, Jim and his group have done it by, by brain power. But it's very unusual. And incidentally, they are going to charge you a lot of money and they're going to actually maybe close up their fund uh, if they do it because they can't do it with really huge amounts of money compared to what they've, how the record's been established in the past. So it's, you, know, you just have to recognize you're dealing with an industry where it pays to be a great salesperson and it pays even better if you're a great salesperson and you can actually produce something but but the money is in selling the, the, there's a lot more money in selling than than in managing excellent now flowing from what warren buffett said if you check out the filing of berkshire hathaway as at september 30th 2021 which pretty much has all these assets listed right here you would notice two exchange traded funds in this portfolio and i'll discuss both of them because i believe personally not financial advice that those ets or index funds are the best for 2022. number one we have the Vanguard 500 Index Fund ETF, the S&P 500 Index Fund managed by Vanguard ticker VOO. Now, in 2021, this ETF has returned 27%, which more or less mirrors the performance of the S&P 500. Rolling back the last five years, you'll see that return of 115%. And guys, in the last one month, the ETF has also shown a positive return. So by and large, this ETF may not give you a very galloping return, but over the very long term, it tends to outperform most other active money managers. Now, some facts about this ETF that are very important for you to note is the expense ratio. You always want to keep your expense ratio as low as possible. In the case of VOO, it's 0.03%. That means you are keeping much of the return you're getting on this ETF to yourself without having to spend so much to compensate the manager for managing this particular ETF. Again, it's a large ETF having $753 billion in market capitalization. So it's not a small ETF that is subject to a lot of risks that much smaller ETF or velocity ETFs face. So by and large, it's a safe ETF for just putting in funds aside over the very long term.
It's also important to understand the sector weighting of this particular ETF to see that this ETF is not concentrated in just one sector but has a mix across different sectors. For example, you have the consumer cyclical having 12%, financial services having 14%, you have communications having 11%, healthcare having 13%, technology is the largest at 24% and that can be explained by the top 10 holdings in this ETF which range from Apple to Microsoft, Amazon, all the way down to NVIDIA. And we have JP Morgan, of course, representing financial services. So by and large, we look at an ETF that has a very decent expense ratio that would allow you keep the most of your returns over the long term. And we're also seeing one that is pretty much diversified across different sectors. It's no wonder Warren Buffett has about $18 million invested in that ETF and still plans to hold this position even into 2022. Now, the second ETF that I feel is the very best for 2022 is the Spider S&P 500 ETF Trust, managed by State Street Advisors. Now, this ETF is slightly different from the other one we discussed in terms of some parameters, which I will highlight shortly. Looking at the overall position, you'll see it's a smaller ETF at $374 billion compared to what we saw with the Vanguard fund or Vanguard ETF having a $753 billion asset under management. Secondly, guys, when you check the expense ratio, which is very critical when you appraise an ETF, you will see that the expense ratio is 0.09%, which is way higher than what we saw with Vanguard at 0.03%. So that might explain why I personally have a preference for the Vanguard S&P 500 fund all right, over the Spider because the Spider has a higher expense ratio and over a long term, these expense ratios tend to pretty much add up and eat out of your return. Looking at the sectoral performance and weighting, we can also see that the ETF has a diverse mix of different sectors with technology again accounting for the largest financial services also up there. We also see communication services quite high, healthcare at 13% and consumer cyclical at 12%. Again, if we look at the different holdings, Apple again holds a very high spot, Microsoft all the way down to Nvidia and JP Morgan, much like we saw with the Vanguard ETF. Looking at the portfolio of Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, we are seeing that he has an 18 million investment in that as well. So he bought these two ETFs and they're sitting pretty in his portfolio and he obviously intends to hold them well beyond 2022. So the next question you may ask is at what point does it make sense to buy into this ETF? Is it okay to get in at $431 for the Vanguard ETF and at you know $469 for the Spider ETF? And this is what I would say I am doing personally. Now, because it's a long-term investment, you really cannot successfully time the market most of the time. So the best position will be to invest gradually over a long period of time. For example, investing $100 in this today, another $100 in another week, another $100 and continuously so that the average cost eventually becomes something lower than the highest cost. Now you may not be able to get the lowest, but over time investing consistently in an index fund is where the magic really happens. So for me, these are two ETFs that are definitely on my watch list to be included in my portfolio in the year 2022 because guys, it is possible that there is indeed a pullback and some of these stocks in the portfolio or other stocks in the market may face a downturn. However, because this is a well-diversified ETF comprising 500 big companies in the US, it's not likely to suffer the damage should there be crisis coming up in terms of market decline or inflation struggles or whatever it is, you would have sort of a diverse pool of stocks that will not equally be affected by the market vagaries. For example, if a sector performs abysmally compared to another sector, the share diversification in these two ETFs should put you up above float over the longer term. Wrapping up. I'm not against individual stock picking. In fact, on my second channel, Nick Finance, you could check it out. I discuss a lot about individual stock picking. However, I understand that there are people that prefer to invest in index funds because of their age, because of their particular income brackets, because of their risk tolerance. And so this video is to help you with some of the best ETFs that the best investor in the world is actually carrying in his portfolio. Now, if you learned anything from this video and you would like more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the like button so that this video can go out to much more investors. And do also remember to check out the 2022 
best stock picks, which again flows from Warren Buffett's ideas of value investing. I put together five stocks in this video, which I think you should also put on your watch list for the year 2022. And with that said, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. And I do hope to see you all again in the very next video, which should come out shortly. Cheers.